seriousness, everyone got hurt on this movie. Everyone was scarred, everyone went through, you know, a little bit of physical kind of pain. But if you're talking about something life-changing, something huge, so, you know, something that really had a deep effect on all of us, not only the person that it happened to, but the crew and most of the Western Hemisphere, Orlando breaking his rib was huge. He fell off his horse, and the scale double of uh, uh, Gimli fell on top of Orlando and broke his rib. I'd scored an injury, do you know what I mean? I was the first one to score an injury. And I think there was a little bit of jealousy that like, the Hobbits didn't get the opportunity, didn't get the opportunity to fall off a horse and break a rib. It's a painful thing, and it's nothing to be sniggered at. And when he told us, we were, God, are you all right and stuff? It was painful, it was very painful. And then when he told us the next day, Oh, that's terrible. Is it not getting any better? Obviously, it was just a rib, and I went, went and had it checked out, and I was on set again the next day, so it was fine. <laughs> just part of the job. A week later, crack rib. Oh, is it still cracked, is it? Right, OK. My lungs are hurting. I feel like my pancreas has been split. I think my spleen has been ostracised. I'm whinging. I really... And all vibes, all vibes are hurt, and I can't ride the horse, and now vibes... And since then, I've, I've heard it in a few interviews as well, and, uh, <laughs> I think it's still healing. They can be fragile. The L's, particularly the Mirkwood strain. That's so funny. No, but seriously, I mean, it was about sucking it up and standing by your fellow man, elf or dwarf or hobbit, wizard, and giving it your best shot, and he certainly did. He certainly did. Legolas is a Mirkwood elf, um, which is one of the woodland realms. Strangers from distant lands. You will unite or you will fall. You have my sword. And you have my bow. He's a warrior, essentially. And that's basically my, my role at, in the fellowship, you know? Yeah, I'm going to do this sort of swinging motion like this. Yep. They have a hyper keen sense of sight and hearing and a beautiful relationship with nature and they're just sort of very powerful special creatures and they're immortal so they haven't known sickness or pestilence they can be slain in battle or they can die of a broken heart but that's about it anybody shoot? it's just in the middle of this preparation it's prepared it's sort of <clears throat> I'm trying to focus here. I'm trying to get my objectives and my actions right. Just because you don't even think about anything like that, you know. And the humans are slightly threatened by the elf. Is he posing? The comely elf, isn't he? We have this joke where we, we dig at each other, me and me and Aragorn, me and Vigo. <laughs> Bean Boy, so threatened, these humans, honestly. So threatened by the elves. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, well, at least I don't smell. And at least I'm going to live forever. So we get a little bit of... Uh, the odd dig here and there, you know, but um, that's just because I can't use a bow and arrow the way I can. <laughs> One of the most challenging parts for me was trying to understand the martial art enough and getting the movement right. I always think of him as a cat, in a way. You know how a cat will, like, hop up onto a table and just sort of stop with no forward locomotion? It'll just stop there and it'll be sitting still and alert on top of a table, you know. It's, they're, they're kind of like that. They have this kind of graceful, poised movement that's always switched on. Something draws near. I can feel it. are just giving it everything they've got and they're moaning and they're wailing and they're screaming and it's great because for us actors it really puts you in the moment and makes you feel what that actor might be feeling. Oh, thank you so much. We've been filming the shores of Lake Town, all the Lake Town folks and Legolas happens to be here too. You just want to make it look like, oh, I've got to, I've got to go. Oh, yeah. You kind of got to look busy, and then you just sort of am, amble away. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, guys. Bang, bang on. I think we've got 150 or so extras on set today, Lake Town folk. But that, of course, will be made into hundreds, hundreds of thousands of extras. Get 
Fury isn't an actor, but he doesn't like to look at his mirror. It's covered with clippings, notes, drawings, and a snapshot of Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom, who plays the elf, he says here, Exhibit A, you notice the superior quality of the pointy ear. We saved a pair for you, you human. Ah, the elf, Legolas. Over the years of shooting, the cast has had a running joke. The elves, elegant and flawless. The humans, blood, sweat and tears, and a lot of mud. You look terrible. He's a smelly, stinking human. He was all prissy about the elves, because I, I never got a scratch. They never sleep. They never seem to get that dirty. And he was like, bloody and messy and beaten up. They never really missed with their <laughs> bow and arrows. There was always another arrow in the quiver. You know, I mean, elves are like superhuman. Not the easiest people to be around. No. So, you know, elf envy. They all had it. Elf envy or not, they clearly admire each other. Orlando stands out as, I think, one of the cast members who had to, without the benefit of many words at all, make you believe instantly. It's a cast that has certainly grown close. The nine actors who make up the fellowship of the first movie even got matching tattoos, though the design and precise location remains, as they say, under wraps. It's kind of like the tattoo is for us, the movie is for you guys. You know what I mean? I wanted to have uh, lighten the mood of the film in somewhat, some, some places, and so we had this, this drinking scene. So it's a drinking game. What exactly is the point of it? Legolas is a slightly better drinker than Orlando, judging by that. You know, everything's so pure with Orlando. Like his breath smells of flowers. I always think of Orlando as being like a thoroughbred or a sports car, but you can't just put anything into it. If you put any alcohol near him, he's just done. He's done. I mean, even Elijah can beat him at drinking. It's true. But I'm a total lightweight. I think I feel something. A slight tingling in my fingers. I think it's affecting Legolas doesn't speak a lot, you know? He's kind of the quiet type. Everyone else was saying things and stuff, and I was sort of just the sort of guy in the background going, What's going on? I'm sensing something. He now saying, Hey, if you want me to don the blonde wig and pointy ears again at any time, you know I'd be happy to. <laughs> Oh my god. It was a very surreal moment to get back into the role, yeah. He's back. Picked up a bow and arrow, seemed to still have it, which was kind of cool. Legolas has very little reason to doubt his father's word as being law, except for a particular young sylvan elf called Tariel, who has quite a different view. Tauriel is the head of the sylvan guard, and so she is in charge of basically the elf army of her people. So she's a pretty badass elf. She's a warrior. She's as deadly as Legolas. I would not antagonize her. 